Hello and welcome to Open Boosters. Guess what? Edwin's here and you know exactly what that means. We're going to open up power. Yes, right. We're going to open up power, <laughs> all right, because we got our Coria, Lair of the Behemoths, and nothing screams more power than that. The power of Icoria. Yes, yeah, so and we're going to play, and you'll be able to play this with any old school deck. They're adding Icoria to the old school. You didn't know that, right? I didn't know that. Yeah, it's fantastic. They're actually going to be adding Ikoria. Only Ikoria. <laughs> you know, they don't want to add Core Set 2021. Just Ikoria because they like big creatures back in the day. So it's old Scoria. It is. It's old Scoria. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah. It's a new thing. You remember Jazamdra's in? No. We got Mutation here. Yes. yes. It's going to be fantastic. Are you excited, Edward? Actually, that would be very exciting, doing yeah. that. Yeah, that would be very exciting. I'm telling Taking you. Taking old school sets and adding one more new set on it. Just one new it set. It would shake it, up the deck diversity so much, actually. It would, it would yeah. right? And that's fantastic. And that's exactly what they've decided to do. There was an announcement. They. Now, you won't be able to find it on the internet. Because, because well, it's announced, but nobody knows. It's a hush-hush. I think you just announced it. Oh, I did? You think yeah, so? I think so. Is the cat out of the bag? It, now it is, yes. Yeah. As soon and, as this goes live. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be really excited because all the old school players are like, man, I gotta go buy some Ikoria. Yep, because I have to. I gotta play Ikoria with my P9 and dual lands and exactly. all that. Exactly. Yep. My ancestral recall that I can pull out of my graveyard because there's a spell in here that I can pull it out and just cast it again. Yep. yep. But here's the big question. Which lands do you use? Beta lands or Ikoria lands? Uh, See, there you go. I would say it's a debate. Beta lands, but but I mean, people might not feel the same way. I do like the Aquaria lands, though. Yeah, they have, the new art lands are definitely very very cool. No, no, no. I'm not talking about this. The new art. I'm talking about they have you have tricolor lands. Oh, that the triumphs. Cycle. The triumphs. Yeah. yeah, the triumphs. Those are, are very, fantastic. Are I'm you actually, kidding me? If you added that to old school, there would be a big dilemma. I don't know why Rudy keeps complaining about those. I actually think they're really cool. He complains about those? Well, yeah, he, like the other day in the video, he was like, you know, the Triumphs, I don't really like those. And he was grumbling about it. And I was like, those things are cool. You How can you not those? like those? I don't know. That's what I don't get. Late game, I pull one of those, hit three, I get an extra card. You can fetch for them and stuff like that, too. You can fetch for them because yeah. they are, they are yeah. playing. Yeah. yeah, I think they're cool. Personally, I like them. He's wrong. Uh, yeah, sorry, Rudy, you're wrong. You're wrong. Rudy. We love you, bro, but you're wrong. Yeah, you're wrong. The Triumphs <laughs> are awesome. Because I would actually probably put those in in combination with my dual lands. Yes. In, in like a commander deck especially, or an EDH deck, they'd just be fantastic. There you go. We've announced it. It's now officially a part of commander That's as it. well. Okay, and, turn off the know, video. Yeah, we're, we're done. done. Bye. Okay, we're out here. <laughs> All right, and we're back. The craziness of Ikoria. Here we go. You excited? Sure. You think we'll get a Lotus? No. <laughs> what about what about a Mox? Maybe. All right. An Ikoria Mox. Now this is the first box, full above booster box that I've opened on the show. I have opened up the mm. uh, collector's edition, but I have not opened up bum, ba, da, straight up box. the straight up box. You know, actually, I really like the box art on that box. It looks you do? Nice. Yeah. You like the, do you like the box topper? I do like it that they're including those in the standard boxes now. I do too. I think yeah. that's fantastic. It just It's just exciting, you know? It is, because, you know, Liliana could be in here. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, no, that's Ultimate Masters. But maybe, maybe, just maybe, Liliana's in here. Well, they just do make, for me. They do make mistakes. <laughs> and some of them have been pretty bad. All right, here we go. We're actually just going to pull out the packs out of here. It's going to be fantastic. Here we go. The Red Madness continues. Okay. What are you most hoping for here? Um, let's see. Well, I know it's not an expensive card, but I like the Mythos. Uh, Blue Aluna. Because I uh, combine it with Ral, mm. and because uh, he, he it, that way I can copy two things on the board, and usually it screws people up if I yep. do that. Or I take their, their or I magnify my board by tw by two, and it's just like huge. I love the Mythos Luna. I think that's an undervalued card, along with Ral. Ral's pretty cheap as well. Yeah. But anyway. Okay, pack All one. All right, pack one. Here we go. Time for the fun, time for the excitement, time for the thrill of the hunt, time to uh, stop saying time. Uh, we have a human soldier, as opposed to the other kind, and we have Runius Ultimatum. Ult oh, there you go. Ultimum. Runius Ultimatum. This is a great card. 
Um, it pretty much ends the game. Whoever actually casts this darn, first... Darn well better for that cost. Yeah. Well, it's destroy all non-land permanents your opponent's control. I mean, they cast it, it's game over. You're done. <laughs> I don't really like that one. Okay, that card... Because it's just like, you know... About five bucks. Yeah. Um, people, people do play it. It's playable. Um, but I don't like it because it's just like, I win, but, uh, you know. I don't really like the Tazawa. Gosh, get her a store for 53 bucks each. Yep. Mothra is there too. Amazing. This set is amazing. Yeah, there's a lot of value in this set. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I should start opening these daily. I probably will. Um, this one is probably not going to be as much. This is the Magistrate. Dreneth. Yeah. <laughs> and he's my rare foil. So that's that's not good. But we also have Songs of Creation, which also I um, don't play with yet. But that's because I don't have it on Arena. Well, or do I have it on Arena? I don't know. $33. That foil Dreneth. So are you serious? Yep. Yeah, you were... Oh, sorry, that's the extended art. Oh, okay, oh, I was like, oh my god. How much is it normally? Yeah, well, let's go find it. Oh, well, in foil form, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of blew my brain with that one. Okay, there we go. There's a normal. Oh my gosh. What a difference. $2.30. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that makes a little worse sense. I guess people really like extended art. Yeah, the extended arts are actually uh, carrying their value because they're. Does either of you know where Mackenzie is? Um, no, we don't. Have to. We know it not. This is uh, Mythos uh, Brokokos. I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it. Um, I prefer other cards that uh, return permanents to my hand, but you know it's there. It works. Brokokos sounds like something I'd call. Neutralize, it. fantastic card in uncommon. Cycling to be able to counter yeah. spell. Perfect. It's perfect in every way. Yeah. Counters are fantastic. Well, the fact that you can draw with it, too. Yep. Another human soldier. We got our blood fells. That's okay. And we have our missile spadex. It's not as exciting. Not really that great. Um, you can just spread damage. Uh, the white and blue, what does that do? If white and blue spend until your next turn, those permanents until it can, can't can attack or block. So, it clears the path. This is a great card. Call of the Death Dweller. Fantastic card. Here, you take a look at that one. This one's actually a good card. Turn up to two target creature cards. To the battlefield? Yeah. Wow, three mana to put it back on the battlefield. Yeah. And a death touch counter. Yeah. Wow, okay. And yeah, you, can get up to, you can really get up to good. two creatures. That is really good. Yeah, it's really good. I think that was a little bit. <laughs> that should have been a rare or a mythic. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> All right, we got, uh, we got our alternate art here, full art for Cub Warden. I just got to say, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's really pretty. Cub Warden's pretty good. Pretty good. It's interesting it's to me that great. the players started actually doing that extended art themselves, and then now Wizards kind of caught on to it and made it kind of like an official thing. Yep. Cub Warden is pretty good. He should be like a two dollar card or something like that. Listen, the spread. I'm looking these up on a smartphone. The text is tiny. And then we have Titan's Nest. I haven't played with it, but it is very interesting. Hmm. Here, I'll tell you. You take a look. You can't use it for X spells. Okay. That's the thing that I can't get around. You know. Exile a card from the graveyard. So you can use your graveyard for mana. Correct. And you can also mill yourself if you don't want those cards. Correct. So go find your good spells. Yes. But the milling fills up your graveyard to make mana available. Correct. Now this one I've used very successfully. He is fantastic and he is foil, but he's probably not worth as much. So there would be a very specific deck this would need to go into because then it also has a restriction upon it. Check out and this how one. You can use it. This one's a good one. I want you to look up that foil. This is classification. Not really. Okay, I'll look up the. Fantastic. Value. Unless you're going to tap your creature, he comes in, gives it a 2020. That one I like. The unpredictable cyclone. I I've used I that very successfully in a, in a cycle deck. I wish I had my laptop here to look you up faster. 
Edwin came unprepared. I did. Because <laughs> we didn't know we were going to do this today. Yeah. <laughs> Crasher. Crasher is good if you can keep them on the board. If you can't keep them on the board, there's just, I mean, it just goes away. <laughs> okay, I found the extended art of this one. And it's, oh wow, the extended art is only $2 for the foil. So he's not as expensive, but I've used that very successfully. The fact of the matter is when you can cycle it and go get another card and throw it directly into play, it's fantastic. So if you can cycle more than one card, you know, it starts spitting stuff all over the board. Human. There it is. Cliffs. 39 oh. cents. Wow. I know. But Oil rare. Like I said, I've used that so effectively. So, okay. Well, this is just an interesting thing, though. i got to mention this. A foil rare in your actual set that actually only goes for 39 cents, and it's even a useful card. Yeah. What? I mean, what a crazy time we're in right now for Magic. <laughs> Foil rare that's useful, 39 cents. That is so weird. Yep. And then, uh, okay, so we have Emergent Ultimatum. Okay. On the seas, this one's pretty fun. Uh, I've stolen it from people, uh, so it's good. In arena. There's a foil. This one's a dire bat is fantastic in my opinion. Dirge? I, I really, yeah, dirge. Dirge bat. Um, he's fantastic. I've used this very successfully. Um, sometimes I cast him out there for four and then mutate him later. Sometimes I just mutate and then he does his thing. He can destroy a target planeswalker or a target creature. Hmm. If, oh, he, that's, that's if he mutates. Good. And he flat has flash. So you can even use him as a blocker, quick yeah. blocker, and throw it down. Flash is an, an incredible ability. I've had so much good use out of that. People sometimes really underestimate the value of Flash. I used to call it flush, because you flush another creature. You throw your creature down, block right. a creature, and it flushes their creature down <laughs> the like garbage. Like Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now this is a huge card. It can usually board wipe if you use it successfully. Huge. All right. Okay. Uh, extinction event. It's insane. Here, have you seen it? Have you read it? Yeah, let me read this. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> that one's a huge card. I don't know how much it is, but it is so freakishly good. So if you build your deck right, you can really take advantage of that. Yeah. Like this, like in a commander deck, imagine this. If like everything in your commander deck is either odd or even, and then there's cards all over the table that are not, right? Yep. Oh yeah, my. that's I can see that being really good. And then we have our General Curdo. He's actually pretty good, um, but uh, he has. I usually combine him with another card that makes humans, uh, that makes legendary humans uh, in in uh, in uh, unkillable. Uh, what's the term? Shit. Indestructible. Thank you. <clears throat> wow, this is surprisingly not an expensive card. Extension I know, event. but it is huge. It is fantastic. I'm just saying it. Wow, I, I see it. Yeah. <laughs> Used properly, that could be an enormous one-sided wipe. It is. It's a really, it's a really one-sided wipe. Or at least it gives you back your advantage that you didn't have before. And since you get to choose you get to when choose. you do it. Odd or even. Yeah, you can always use the best advantage of it. Exactly. So, I mean, I don't understand why some of these aren't expensive, but, you know, it's, it's fine. It works out. <laughs> Playability, huge. I can't even and here's our Triome. There we go. See? Fantastic. You get yep. three different types of mana, and you also get to cycle it if you need to later on in the game. Yep. Perfect. Very good. I love it. Just like the USA right there, red, white, and blue. <laughs> That's right. You can take a look. That's Rogren Triumph? Yeah. He's going to be worth a little more because he's uh, red, white. I mean, he's blue, red. Anything blue, uh, blue uh, something is usually really good. It's funny. What do you think of when you think blue, red? Um, 
I don't know. I always think volcanic. Oh, volcanic, volcanic island, island, yeah. It's just my my head goes right there. I can't get that out of my head. <laughs> Boone Wisher Giver. Okay, now this one's a great card as well. I don't think he's worth as much as others, but he can cycle and then he goes back into your deck. Mm -hmm. And if you cycle him four times, he comes out on the board and he's hasted with trampling. That's fantastic. Yeah. Now when I when I played him uh, before, there's my there's that enforcer I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Legendary human creatures get indestructible. Wow. Yeah. So. But I was playing him, and <laughs> I managed to do that, and then the, the guy killed it right there. <laughs> he was waiting for it. That's the problem. They can count. Your opponents can count, and it's terrible. <laughs> so the triumphs are going six fifty. Six fifty seven dollars. Yeah. I should get a place out of those. You should. Human soldier. They'll be reprinted though, I think. Oh, for sure. Um, I haven't really played with this one that much because green white is not really my thing. Uh, there you go. I'll let you read it. Flourishing Fox, always awesome. Really put it. This one actually works pretty well too. The bouncing back up to the hand uh, always works. So, but the Flourishing Fox in the cycle deck, kind of annoying. And this card is great right here. Sorry, this card. I'm showing him now. Mm -hmm. Even though it's a common, it's fantastic. Oh gosh, it's a disenchant with cycling. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's, that's big. That's a main deck include. I mean, look, it's green and one. That's it. Green and one. And if they're not using enchantments and they're just going freaker, nice little creature planeswalker thing, you can just cycle it, go get something. It's fine. Oh, yeah, this. It's like a no brainer card. This is, he's, he's really good. This is actually, what, what's he do? Well, I he, mean, he I basically, know. you can make other things uh, a cat elemental, nightmare dinosaur, or beast card. And then um, a specific other ones, let's see, cat, elemental, nightmare, nightmare, dinosaur, or beast get plus one, plus one until end of turn. So you can make every other creature in your deck that type, and then they all get bigger and get vigilance, and he has vigilance, all for three mana. And he's a three two. Oh, to himself. That's nice. actually really good. All right, cool. And then we have one of my favorite foils here, the homage. Because, here, read him. When Every time he mutates, it's 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 fantastic. Oh, Triumph. Is, yeah, there another Triumph. Forest Island Mountain, which is good. Fantasticness. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, so if you get yeah. if you can put that twice on any creature, yeah. uh, you know. Keep draining. Keep, well, you keep draining, but yeah. if you get two of those, each one triggers. It's just uh -huh. insane how fast they lose life. And if you use put it on a hex proof creature, which nobody can interfere with mm -hmm. in theory, it's so good. And then three, Unclave. yes, draw a card, activate this ability only if you control a creature with four or greater power. It's like the new library. It is, it is, but it's not. I mean, you don't have to cast it. That's the best part. Yep, I can definitely see that being pretty good. It is. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It was smart of them to have it take a mana cost, though. Oh, yeah. Instead of just tap and draw, like, library. Exactly. Whoops. There Arguably the stupid, most broken land in all of Magic. Yes. Yeah. Eh, this one's okay. You have to choose zero, and a zero or even, and it's, 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 you know, protection. So we did not yet get a Gittera or a Mothra. Oh, we got tons of time. Or a land. We'll probably hit the Mothra. Um, that's my estimation. It's so weird for me to have Mothra in a magic game. I know. Now, this is a great card as well, Sky Nomad. Mm -hmm. um, he, he exiles stuff and brings it back to the board. And yeah, so that cool. creates a whole bunch of triggered events. Oh, yeah, for sure. Four or five flying for five, not bad also. Another human soldier. Oh, here. he lets you do any number of non land permanents. Yes, and the Fiend Artisan is a great card. Oh, yeah, this card guy is combolicious. Well. Yeah, that one's combolicious, this one right there. But check the nightmare out. Oh my gosh. Fiend Artisan. Yeah. Okay, I'll He's our mythic, there. first mythic. Ba -ba -ba. Yeah, but check this guy out. He's just good. For each creature card in your graveyard. For wow. each creature card. Yes. Wow. <laughs> As creatures go, he's pretty cool. And then if you deal it with a sacrificing deck, you know, where you need to, 
And, uh, oh my gosh. Yeah. And the fact that he is the dual mana up here, the black, green, black, green, so you can put him in a black, red sacrifice deck, oh and it's just, it's just insane. Oh, that's a fantastic card. Yeah. <laughs> and it's basically, just, yeah, just tutoring up for key cards that you need. Need, yes. This one's a fun card. Um, he has Doom Depths. He bring you, you see four, two, uh, eight cards because you get four from you and four from your opponent, and then you get an even card. Fiend Artisan's about 14 bucks. Yeah, I expected that. Um, here, just look at this one. This one's good. This one's, it's fun. It's fun. Da -da -da -da. This one's uh, it's okay. Oh, and after this, you need to see the parrot. So I know you haven't seen these cards. The parrot's great too. I like the picture. Yeah. <laughs> contains cards with even. Control. Even, yeah. So you can only have even in your deck if you use them as one of those things. But you don't have to do that. You can put odds in there, mm -hmm. but you can you can put more creatures, and you just keep flashing that back up and down and putting it back into the board or making copies of it mm -hmm. and you just start filling your board with nothing but a bunch of creatures wow yeah it can drill and really be really bad for your opponent but check out the pork yeah now think death touch oh my gosh <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> Another triome. There we go. White, black, and green. Yeah, the porky parrot. Like, you let that thing live long enough. And it's got four life, too. Yeah, so I know. It can survive a lot of removal. It can. It can, indeed, too. So. And it's just a tap ability to just do it. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, the parrot's strong. The parrot is strong. Did I ever think I was going to say a parrot is strong in magic? <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> the mighty parrot. Oh, oh, hey, there we look go. Look at that. Yeah, it looks really cool, doesn't it? And it the fact is, you can uh, mutate out of the graveyard. So it's actually pretty nice. Here, I'll take wow. you to Eglin. It's got that a is nice, nice artwork there. Good hit. Good job, Daniel Warren Johnson. Yeah. Look at this guy. Ridiculous. Oh, yeah, he's ridiculous. Can you imagine mixing these cards in with old school cards? All that mana acceleration? I'm selling like it. This? I'm saying it. It would be awesome, right? It'd be fun. I wasn't kidding. Now this is a huge card. Boom! Right here. Look up Lurus of the Dream Dead. Okay. He is like a king ding -a of pulling crap out of your graveyard. Okay, I'm still looking up uh, Brokos. I'm really hoping that that's not... <laughs> that I didn't okay, just say that really bad. This is $22. Yeah. It's, it's, that's, well, it's Broco, it's, so this guy is $22. Yeah, that's a really good card. That one. Lewis Boom. Again. All right, we got our Mythos. Oh, that's a Mythic. What happened to the other Mythics? I guess I stuck them in here. Okay, Lurus of the Dream Den. Foil, $5. <clears throat> He's still good. Look at him. Game I mean... Okay, Life Link. I think some of the Three prices on okay. these things are just, you know, they don't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So you get a free cast right out of your graveyard. Out of your graveyard. Wow. I'm just saying. And there's so many different combos with him. We got our Titan Ape. The Titan Ape of Legendary Kichu. That's the only way to have an ape. It's got to yeah. be Titan. Exactly. Bigger the better. So to me, this has been a great box. Yeah, you definitely pulled some cash out. Dinosaur, Tranquil Grove, another Cub Warden. I still have those triumphs, too. The triumphs are fantastic. Neither one of them was foil, right? Um, I don't think so. No, none of them were foil. Spirit Dragon, and then the Celestial Dragon. He's pretty good because you just can throw him in there if you need a creature. And then he bumps up. He gets a counter every single time. Nice. Different counter. This is, this is a great card. You'll like The Crystalline Giant? Yeah. You'll like this one. 
or Bastion Remembrance, you'll love that one. Oh, and then if you get a second, you need to take a look at that one too. <laughs> yeah, that's good. The Auspicious Starks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's a six, 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 five. Yep. There's a reason why he's... Put those permanents on the battlefield? <laughs> yep, yep. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, wow. So this is a great card as well. We got the Apex of Death. Is it Neth? Nethroi? Yeah, Nethroi, Apex of Death. Yep. Look at this Put up. that up there. The showcase is expensive. $24. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. I don't think this will be uh, 24 hours. There we go. We got a dirge bat. Oh, look at that full art foil. Yep, yeah, full art foil dirge bat. And I like the dirge bat, as we already discussed it earlier. Mm -hmm. And we got this guy. He's he's okay. You know, if you have a if you have a creature greater than four, and you have to have the companion cost of everything has to be greater than four, and all that kind of stuff. Oh, Nethroy, that's what I was looking at. Yeah. All right. There's so much variety in this like set of cards. I know. It's the like box. the best set that's been out in like ages, as far as I'm concerned. And then the Shark Typhoon. He's fun. A little bit too expensive with the six mana cost. Is that a reference wasn't. to Sharknado? I believe so, yes. Oh, gosh. And then... Um, Wizards jumped cycles. the Sharknado. Yes. However, it jumped it really well. So this is a really good card. Uh -huh. um, I use it in my white-blue where I can exile it. I mean, not exile, but cycle it really early on in the game. And oh. then I throw it back to board and it becomes a 4-4 four, four creature. <laughs> I'm sorry. All I can hear is Sharknado. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Sharknado. Yes. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> All right. Human. Um, I haven't really played with this one, but it's just a copy spell, but you have to cast it before it. So it's going to cost three hmm. mana. Kind of like the Simic Guild Mage. Kind of yeah, thing. exactly. I made a mess. That's okay. We're almost done. Uh, don't I make a mess with those. some Simic decks in the past. They ended up being decent. Oh, yeah. Like Simics and bolts and chains and chains things like and that. Chains and that. All right. We have our Narset Ancient Way Island and another Eerie Ult. No, wait. This is our first Eerie Ultimatum. Never no, mind. I think it's the second. No, the other one was another Ultimatum. Yeah, that was the one where the, ult the first Ultimatum was where I destroy oh, okay. everything. Okay. Dire Taxis is also a great uh, uh, uncommon. Looking up Eerie Ultimatum. Alright. I gotta straighten out these uncommon because it's kind of bugging me. They're falling into the tokens. Alright. So I'm pretty sure y'all have liked this video. This video has been pretty fun. Shark. This box is crazy, yeah. Yeah, this, but all of them are like this. It's fantastic. And then. This one I've used successfully. I just, it's got, it needs a little bit more. You know? It's Flash, though. It's Flash. It's Flash, and any other spell that, you, that has Flash that you cast, you can draw, and uh, your opponent loses a life. Mm -hmm. But I can't get it, like... Each opponent. Yeah, I can't get it fast enough, yeah. though. I like how they have wording in there to make it Commander EDH specific. Yeah. How it works. Just by default now, they think about the impact on Commander. And we have this. All right, and we have our Hunted Nightmare. I have not played it because I don't like giving my opponent anything, and I would have to remove all his creatures. So. Mm -hmm. so he's cheap. I mean, he's my 4-5 Menace. Um, oh. Okay. Now, these two cards are awesome. I'm glad they came you know, he'd be just fine if you are playing with Bolts or something, uh, like some, some removal. Yes. 
Whatever they give it to. Whatever they get, you know. But check this out. Okay, so you know the cycling stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. This card is way overpowered with the cycling. Because you have to be able to remove your opponent's graveyard mm -hmm. because of this. All right? Not that one. This one's this one can go back. Okay. Target you gain X life or X is the number of cards with a cycling ability in your graveyard. So think about wow, what person... Game, that's fantastic. That's, it's fantastic, right? And so they make the drill <laughs> decks so they can cycle and throw cards into their graveyard until they get that card. Yeah. All right? So now yeah, this, this is one, basically a finisher. Yeah, it's a finisher. Yeah. But you put four in a deck and it's fine, right? Yeah. So that's why you have to remove people's graveyards. I've been playing with nothing but at least one type of removal of graveyard. I could see this being like a finisher in a deck that's built for like modern or for a legacy or something like that. Oh yeah. I can totally see it. And then this one's a fun this, one. This one we're talking about. Sorry. Yeah. This one's a fun one because you can blow up board with damage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've, I've, I've played with four of those in the deck with nothing but things that blow up the board with damage. Wow. <laughs> it's hilarious. It gets super big really quick. Something like this with like a pestilence or something. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. just inflate them up. Yep. Alright, here we go. Box stopper time. Who's excited? I have no idea what to read for. I really don't. Drum roll, please. But we definitely, I, I think we got our money out of this box, that's for sure. Um... Here we go. No, it's not the one I want. <laughs> Uncommon. The Ancient Guardian. Yeah. He looks yeah. angry about not being worth more. Yeah, he does. He does. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you go. There's not going to be a TCG play ramp at the end of this. But, you know, I think Edwin did a good job oh, thank giving you. us an approximation of value. Woo! And so, uh, <laughs> hit the like button, subscribe, make a comment, and I'll talk to you again on the next one. Later, everybody.